the assholes how they have been developed where they come from and why they are like this right now stay tuned and i explain you everything about the f-holes hello hello back again this is edgar from cremona italy i am a violin maker and do it every day from the morning until late at night only construction and one part of the violin and it's a very typical sign where there is an f-hole people who play violin or bow string instrument they go there they know ah this is for us the f-hole has an evolution just like the violin itself and the violin has been created and then how you might know i don't believe that there is a single person out there in universe who has created with the magic touch the violin no it was more a summary of a lot of cultural things going on and out of many instruments that violin has been created. I don't want to go into details if it has been in Italy, in France or in Germany. One instrument which has been fundamental for the birth of the violin, viola, cello has been definitely the viola da gamba. I think people talk in English about gamba very easy going. At that time I think more importance in Spain and France and not so much here in uh, Italy has been created out of the Arabic world and the European culture, Renaissance and Baroque influenced all these kind of instruments a lot and these instruments have been played until many many years up to the 18th century i think 19th century 19 yeah and next to it then has been created the violin now if you look at the viola da gamba there are no corners it's just a very simple shape if you're not into the world, they would say it's a violin, but it's not a violin because there are no corners. The back is not arched, it's flat. And the F-holes, which we call now F-holes, are not an F, but a C, you know? Close by the C's of the instrument, they are on the top two C's inside. And now if you take this C, you say, what does this C has to do with the violin F-hole? If you take this C and you sign it on a paper and you cut the upper part and you flip it around then you have an s yeah you can swap it from one side to another and this created this famous s or now we call it for educational reasons we call it a holes the evolution of this f hole has actually also a little bit a different uh, origin if you just think of a gasparo bertolotti da salo his f holes in the very beginning these wings were not like a steady very large with a cut large with a cut but were actually rather to a pin a small tip which was very stiff and that was easy to cut you know they just cut it and so they had one cut less they made a round hole this hole at the time was drilled with these positioning holes they had these upper and lower holes and then they put a metal plate on it attached it on these two drills which were the left inside the top and then they went along with the knife on one side on the other one and then they flipped it out so we could say that the first f holes how we know them right now of an f hole were actually made on gasparo bertolotti da salo and then out of that they made an evolution they made things a little bit more sophisticated and they started to have this shape we have it now as days Stradivari of course was one of the makers who brought the design of these f-holes in a perfect harmony which corresponded also to the outline of the instrument and also to the shape and the model of the scroll while in the previous makers that was a little bit less sophisticated maybe also already Amati was pretty good but things didn't from my point of view didn't match that well together then Stradivari brought it to that perfection and you couldn't do it better than him right now there are some certain things as long as we call it a violin you cannot design it better than how Stradivari did it and then of course like a signature you write on a paper as soon as you put yourself there and you cut with a knife something it automatically gets, gets your personal touch and that's actually 
actually the perfection of an instrument if I make it from the scroll, outline, purfling, F holes and everything, then it all matches together because it has been made with my hand. For those who want to go into details and how to cut, how to position the right F holes, how important it is if they are next to each other or far away, straight up or a little bit more cleaned in and things like this, how to cut it, how to finish, how to give them the right size and everything. The Edgar Online Violin Making Academy is the great opportunity for you. With a mouse click, you can get your access and you can get all the information. An interesting detail about the F holes when they're cut is that usually people cut them straight inside and there you have then opportunities to look them if you want to look them both at the same time, if you look at one and at the other one. If you cut them getting a little bit bigger in order that you can see them very clear with a very definite line or if you just cut them very natural without being disturbed that from these flanks of the F holes when you look at the F hole from the front if from the underneath comes out a little bit and this is actually the case how the old great masters cut at them and they didn't pay attention to cut it in a way that this material didn't influence the appearance of the F hole and so a copy of an instrument you can easily detect because they are too clear. On an old instrument they are kind of a little bit cut in a very quick and dirty way let's say so you could see a little bit this material from underneath from the side when you're inside and that's something which is a nice sign that you can understand if it's a copy or a real old one more detail about the f holes because before somebody says yeah we could make out of it and we just could make a straight cut in or drill a hole and that's it is somehow true it's actually not that good to cut it into the top because the top is vibrating and you could even leave the top without F holes and it would still vibrate the way it vibrates. But there is one tiny detail. The wings have a certain effect on the sound, especially the lower wings. If we leave them rather strong, you will automatically obtain a stronger E string and this is a fundamental part of violin making. It's a pity that few violin makers watch my channel. They could even learn a little bit, besides that they learn a little bit English, they could also learn how to make it sound better on the E string. If you leave the thicknesses of these wings a little bit thicker, you can easily compete then also on the E string with my instruments. Yeah, just a tiny trick. Hope you enjoyed this one. Tell your friends. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.